Hey, Derek, John, I think it's about time we finally give our predictions for a rumored Nintendo Direct coming up this Monday, because it hasn't been officially announced yet, so if it actually does end up happening, we may not have an actual chance to give our predictions if we don't do it now. So this rumor does come to us by way, originally, of Video Games Chronicle, who reported that a supposed insider on Resetera, who has accurately guessed Nintendo, or not guessed, I should say, reported uh, Direct dates before, is once again reporting that there is one coming up this Monday. So if we assume this to be accurate, we have no reason to think that it may not be, uh, I thought, again, we should get together, give our predictions, that way we have something out there, considering we have no idea whether, whether Nintendo is actually going to announce this in advance or not. So, and to that point, I guess, what are you guys kind of expecting here? Are you expecting a full, proper direct, or are you expecting something closer to a mini that they may just shadow drop on the same day? Personally, I'm expecting a mini. I think it, we're a bit too close to the actual direct if it does that for there not to be an announcement, and as you were saying earlier, it's very unlikely that they would actually um, just drop a full-fledged direct with no lead up to it. So it sounds like a mini, but minis aren't a bad thing. We've had good minis in the past. Tropical Freeze was in a mini. How can you have a bad <laughs> exactly. time with that? I think we also had um, some other big games in minis before, like Mario Tennis Aces. Um, I think Min Min, for, uh, well at least the arms character was in a, in a, uh, in a mini. That's so, true. You know, mini doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be good. I mean, Path of Inman's name is in a mini, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think it kills, like, it doesn't mean, like, the announcements aren't going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know if they're as big as they, you know, they, they could be in that case, but I still think there's, like, you know, that we don't really know what Nintendo's putting out post Origami King, and Origami King is out now, so what's coming next? And I think that's going to answer this. This this feels to me like if there is something, it's going to be their August, maybe September games. Pro maybe even October, considering Origami King was announced, what, three months ahead of time? So they might be just continuing that, that where it's like, alright, here's a bunch of little games coming out in uh, uh, August and September, and here's the big thing for October. So you don't think they'll fill out the rest of the year in this? No. Actually, that, that, that brings up a good point, because this this is a hard time right now. It's hard to commit to a certain schedule. Right. So what if they just gave us like the next couple of months of games, and then after that we get another mini, just filling out the year? Like, instead mm -hmm. of just committing right now, instead just spread it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, we know for sure that we can get it out at this time, so here's what we, we have for this set of months. And that makes a certain amount of sense. It, it keeps hype in check. It, uh, I mean, it, it definitely draws in interest. People are going to be watching that next set to see what kind of games are coming out you know, af after that. And they can uh, don't have to worry about issuing, sorry, it's been delayed because of these issues. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like they almost have to like give us a better indication of what's happening for the rest of the year because... The, the, end, the end of the year is usually their big games, right? Um, and I can't imagine them announcing one of those just mere months from their release. We're already in July. November's only a few months away, really. Anyways, I guess let's just get to our predictions. So, uh, who <laughs> wants to start things off here? Well, I think I can see a theme coming on with a lot of our predictions, and that's that Mario's 35th anniversary has been rumored <laughs> for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, we know it's happening this year, but we don't know exactly what game's going to be announced. So should we just get that out of the way first? Like what? Mario I think we have to. Do? I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Is is this going to be the time where it's actually going to be shown? And are they going to be the ones that we expect? So just as a quick reminder, the rumored games are a compilation pack, kind of like Mario All Stars, of three different 3D Mario games, being Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and the first Super Mario Galaxy. Then independent of that, there's apparently a remaster of Super Mario 3D World also in the works. So, Derek, to throw it back at you, what do you think? Are you expecting these? Yes and yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they, they all seem solid enough that, yeah, it's probably going to be announced this time. It makes sense to have it come up and be a big thing and get people excited for that. That's definitely going to pe set people a buzz. Uh, and then they can show off the four games, and those are big four games. Now, how much they've been uh, tweaked? That's a good question. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it might... It, this is Nintendo, so they might just keep it pretty simple, or they might go all out. It's it's hard to say what kind of level of uh, port we're going to get with this. What do you predict? It's pretty simple, honestly. I don't think we. I don't think they're going to go all out. Like I think we're going to see some. Uh, the graphics mostly be the same on Mario 64. We're not going to get something a la, you know, Crash or. Um, so you're Spyro. expecting. So you're expecting remasters, right? Or not even. Basically, it's going to be the same game with some uh, slight graphical improvements and upscaled and you know all that. I don't think it's going to be too major of a difference. And I think Sunshine and Galaxy are likely going to be 
just a slightly prettier thing. Like I don't even I don't even expect the type of like things to help out gameplay that uh, Tw Twilight Princess and Wind Waker got. I think it's just going to be more straight ports. I agree for the most part, um, but I, also one thing as well, Nintendo are famous for just selling a remaster on its own, like Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD, so to even fathom them combining three of the biggest Mario games is still pretty cool, even if yeah. most of them are quite old games. But I think they could have just sold Galaxy on its own and people probably would have bought it. Um, but I do think that we will get some gameplay changes, and I'm thinking primarily with Mario 64's camera. I think that would be a bit fiddly to just map your right analog stick, and I think we might get something a bit more in line with like Odyssey's camera, or just something a bit more modern. That'd be a nice change of pace because you know that that is one of the bigger issues with it. And I mean, they could go crazy and just give a sixty four sorry Super Mario sixty four DS and just make it look nicer. Oh my, that, that would be better. crazy. That That's upgrade? a bigger version. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so hey, I'm just saying, we go wild. <laughs> I mean, I guess if they included both, that'd be that'd be fine. Um, but I, I really hope. I mean, that can't be the only version they offer. No, here. no, yeah. My, my expectation is, I mean, I guess not too far off from what you are expecting, Derek. But I, I think that Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy, at the least, will probably just be upscaled versions of the games that exist already, uh, minus Mario Sunshine being presented in widescreen. I think Mario 64 will actually get a bigger upgrade. I think we'll actually have. Uh, I think that actual I think that one actually will be a remake. I'm predicting Mario 64 will actually have new models. I mean, basically what Mario 64 DS was, but actually Mario 64, not whatever that weird thing was. <laughs> um, I mean, here's the problem if it doesn't. Like the Mario 64 on PC right now is being modded to have an art style exactly. very similar to the pre-rendered graphics, and imagine having an official Nintendo product that is lesser than that. Yeah. That, that will not look good. It wouldn't, yeah. but also that wouldn't affect it either, so... <laughs> it, it wouldn't, no. But I agree with you. I think Mario 64 is a game that needs the most attention visually, whereas Mario Sunshine, especially Galaxy, I'm sure, will hold up largely fine. Um, although it is funny that I think, you know, we're talking about improving Mario 64's camera, when Mario Sunshine is the one <laughs> that definitely needs a reworked uh, camera mm. to some extent. Uh. I I think there's a chance that we will get some, some slight modifications. I think, you know... I, I think a lot of Wind Waker HD, actually. Probably not to the impact that one had, but only because there's no single fix you can make to Mario Sunshine to make the same kind of impact that the Switch cell did in, Mario, or, uh, in Wind Waker. No. Though, mm -hmm. speaking of like Wind Waker HD, imagine they just mapped that kind of lighting into Sunshine. It would be a pretty natural fit. That's true. Yeah. It, it, it does have the potential to look pretty nice, and, you know, it's hard to say how far they'll go. We still need to figure out what they're going to do for the... Uh, the little star pointer in Galaxy and right. uh, how that's going to be transferred over to the Switch, but I'm sure there's a pretty simple workaround, uh, all things considered. Like uh, Captain of course Toad. We haven't, yeah, probably like Captain Toad. That makes the most sense. Uh, of course, we haven't talked at all about the fourth game, which is Super Mario 3D World, which uh, the general sense I'm getting from people talking about this one is this one's going to be the one that have the most stuff to it. That's uh, kind of funny. The newest game is the one getting the most attention possibly. <laughs> yeah. We don't, we don't know for sure. Yeah, but we do know that that one does seem to be enhanced, I believe, right? Yeah. That I mean, is this rumor, one's yeah. also very marketable on its own. Like the, the Sandbox trilogy, they're all very personal experiences. I think it's very easy to sell 3D World as like a family setting, a big multiplayer game. So it makes sense to kind of put it on its own. And also, almost every Wii U port on Switch has had some kind of extra feature. Like Tokyo Mirage Sessions had, you know, those extra, uh, those extra uh, chapters. And then Xenoblade, which is a Wii port, had an epilogue. And Tropical Freeze had Funky Kong. So they're, they're almost certainly going <laughs> to add something. Mm-hmm. Funky Kong, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, in, in 3D World? Yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's probably going to be the big showcase for this one. That, you know, that's well, a, funky what they'll like either what they'll start with or end on. I mean, I could see maybe September or late August for the collection if this is, if that's how it is packaged, and November for uh, 3D World. So, what's our new content for 3D World? Uh, are we expecting just another character, like Toadette or Funky Kong, or are we expecting something a bit more substantial? <laughs> the only thing I can think of is that would maybe excite people is new levels, and maybe the easiest thing they can do for that is take the levels from 3D Land and transport them over. Because I don't see 3D Land getting a port anytime soon, so using that content might be a method. That would actually be pretty cool. It would be cool. 
I, I see one problem with that, and that's 3D World's levels are a bit broader to fit four players, where squeezing everyone into 3D lands might be a bit too, like, claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. Especially with those, like, tightrope levels, or those levels where you're riding on those flip switches. I'm not sure those would work too well with four people at a time. Oh, probably not, but that's the chaos. <laughs> yeah, know? I guess. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I think, I think in the game that we already have, what, five playable characters? Spoilers. <laughs> um, I don't know if adding just a character would be exciting enough, right? If you're trying to if you're trying to reach people who've already bought the Wii U version, I mean, I say that, but they've already done exactly <laughs> that. Uh, but I feel like adding another character is less meaningful in this game than it has been in some others. So yeah, I think including like at least an additional world, for instance, would go a long ways. You, hmm. You're telling me that you that people wouldn't go nuts if they completed the Princess Collection and have uh, Daisy in there, or Pauline, <laughs> or Pauline. So, as part of this whole thing, a Twitter account was discovered for the Mario 30th, 30th anniversary that seemingly possibly belongs to Nintendo. Now, as part of this, just recently, uh, a another account is discovered for F-Zero, an F-Zero Japanese account uh, that has the same email address, and that raises the question, could we see something F-Zero related in this Direct, if we think, the, if we think that account could be, could be real? Or official, if we I do, say. what are we going to do with our thumbnails? We have to like find other, <laughs> other dominant Nintendo franchises, like Eternal Darkness or Earthbound. But the biggest question, yeah, yeah. But I think. I mean, I, I guess we could possible. start putting Lucas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nintendo certainly are. They must be aware that there is a fan demand for F Zero, and I think their reasoning for not doing one was basically they couldn't fi uh, think of a, a new advancement for the series. But I think they found one, and it's something I think Andre's been tweeting about this uh, for a while as well. F Zero ninety nine. Yes. Just put more players in. Make it online. Like we've not had an online F Zero before. There's definitely more they can do with this series. Now, would that be in 3D or SNES style? Um, I, I picture it being a 3D game, but I don't picture it being F Zero GX. I think that's that's definitely Sega's domain. I think Nintendo will probably revert back to like X, like the kind just just their standard F Zero formula. Yeah. I'm. I'm. The funny thing is, I'm not much of a F Zero player, so I have. I could not tell you the differences between X and GX beyond graphics and, and a G. levels and stages. <laughs> so how do we sell you an F Zero, Derek? Do you need Captain Falcon? Is he what's going to lead lead the sale for you? I mean, I did buy GX, but the game was really freaking hard. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that definitely was a bit of a barrier for me. Um, I enjoyed what I played, but it's also a series I've not played a lot of. I've said I'll be excited for it, uh, whatever they might do. Um, this just drives the question of, is this the whole uh, male thing for Twitter legit or not? You know, uh, like I don't obviously I don't doubt that Mario is going to be a thing. But what you know, is this whole setup true or not? I don't know. Could we get an F-Zero? Maybe. Maybe it's just a port. Um, yeah, my prediction of, of GX. So my official prediction is we don't see F-Zero here. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to make of those accounts. I can see that going either way. But I, yeah, my, my official prediction is no F Zero in this direct. Uh, I think that's logical, but I'm going to go all in and say we <laughs> are going to see F Zero. <laughs> to final logic, <laughs> I want it to happen. Nintendo on a high right now. They've released a bunch of their mainline games already. Get the niche ones in there now. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. But uh, I, I guess the other question, uh, going from one of my predictions, is that we typically can expect. A Wii U game in one of these directs. A 3D uh, world. Yeah, exactly. Is it just going to be 3D world, or would they add in something else? Because I, uh, you know, people have talked about Pikmin 3 as a, another possible uh, port. You know, one of the other games languishing on the Wii U that's like, let's just port it and have it on a more popular system. And who knows? Maybe this could actually lead into Pikmin 4 and they could finish up that last 5% of development that they've always hidden from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pikmin 3 has been rumored forever. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think this actually might be a good time. This is like a perfect filler title for the year, I think. It's nothing especially exciting if you've played it before, but um, I think a lot of people did miss out on it with it being on the Wii U and I think it would get interest. So I predict, yeah, I think Pikmin 3 will be here. The best mm -hmm. way to sell Pikmin is to give them give them no other options for games to buy. They make it the only game on the market. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, I think this will be another game that probably has new content as well, um, like most like most Wii U games. And uh, Pikmin Three is actually pretty expansive with its content. Like after the story, there's a bunch of multiplayer games, uh, and there's like a bunch of DLC as well. 
So I'm wondering, like, do you just do more of those versus games, or do you just go all out and make, like, a an Olimar campaign or something? Oh, man, you could see what Louis was up to the entire time. I've not played Pikmin 3, I've just, you know, heard about what generally what happens and I know a lot of people really enjoy the bingo mode and I wonder if Nintendo would go that extra step to put bingo mode online that'd be, that'd be big yeah I'd that, love that mm -hmm. that'd be really cool it'd be a good way to sell more you know or give more value to Nintendo Switch online as well which we haven't had a whole lot of <laughs> additive content <laughs> recently for it you don't want to play the immortal <laughs> on NES that completely <laughs> mediocre game yeah, not so much <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. I, I hope this is now the time. It feels it feels like this this could be it. It could just be because mm -hmm. Pikmin 3 was a summer game too. So it just it just kind of feels right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. My next prediction is Ring Fit Adventure DLC. A paid for second quest is going to be added to the game. It's a full scale adventure. Uh, with a new boss, I assume we beat the first one. I actually haven't beat the first one, but I assume something I happened haven't. to him. <laughs> so I think we'll get a uh, a second adventure. That, that seems likely. I mean, Ring Fit mm. is a runaway success. It's just people can't buy it. <laughs> so, but yeah. whenever it gets in stock, it's always selling out immediately. There's definitely demand, and uh, I can see it. My only, my only thing is I don't think most people would complete the main Ring Fit adventure because it's so long. Uh, but maybe just some fresh point of view would be enough to get people to buy the DLC. Maybe they could have, like, those masters that have each of the ligaments and have them have their own, I don't know, section that you can do extra stuff with and changes it up each day a little bit or mm -hmm. something like that, you know? Focuses yeah. on the area that you want and it provides somewhat new content and run through. Or they could go really crazy and have, like, all right, let's have you run through this Mario world or run through this Zelda world or, you know, here and just change up the backgrounds and... You know, get the more uh, hardcore gamers <laughs> into it a little bit more to check out, the, you know, running through uh, Hyrule. And in stuff Mario like World would be awesome. I said before, too, that I would love if they added a ring fed mode to Breath of the Wild. Just let you, like, run along the preset paths in the game that already exist. Uh, as Link, you just run in place, you can squeeze no, a ring. No, you would not be Link. You have to be the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, I forget his name, but be the mailman. Have that whole setup and him. He's, With the you, short shorts. You squeeze your, yes, yeah. exactly. You squeeze the ring the, the ring, and you send out mail and deliver mail to people. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> I'm down for this. That sounds great. E eat your heart out. Uh, Link's crossbow training, the new best spinoff. <laughs> Just tossing Oof. mail letters. It's a bo bold claim. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right. All right. What's next? Um, so I've been on a Panel de Pong kick lately. I've been playing the original Super Nintendo. I imported the Nintendo uh, Puzzle Collection, and I had an epitome where I want. We've been I've been predicting this for a while. A Splatoon spin-off, but what I want is Splatoon Puzzle League. I think that would be so cool. <laughs> having Splatoon music in the background, having all these different themes, being able to like leave messages in some sort of hub and battle your friends. I think this would be a great way to bring back the Puzzle League franchise and give it some personality. It's been a long time since it's had personality. <laughs> um, maybe even have Lip sort of cameo in, uh, like dressed as an inkling. I think there's a lot you can do with Splatoon's aesthetic in Panel of the Pond. I, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Panel of the Pond with Splatoon music. I have, uh, gosh, they could even do like special things for the uh, splat, you know, pseudo flat, splat fests oh, yes. uh, between people. Uh, and have those special tracks or special things you can unlock. I, I don't know. I I, I want it. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. I, I love the idea of a Splatoon spinoff and even in puzzle form, but I feel like uh, I feel like we're kind of beating around the ideal genre for Splatoon beyond a shooter, and that'd be a music game. Splatoon is so well known for its music. It already has a music game within Splatoon, a not very good one, but it exists. <laughs> and it's also been reincorporated into Ring Fit Adventures, uh, DLC uh, music mode and so I feel like that might be the angle that they'd explore if, <laughs> if they actually are doing a Splatoon spin-off. I mean Nintendo do have a rhythm franchise. What if they just comp like collaborated with Rhythm Heaven with Splatoon? Oh man, that'd be something. Splatoon Heaven? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Splatoon Heaven, <laughs> there you go. See, I was thinking like go this, uh, the route of the Persona dancing games and you know be able to dress up your inkling and unlock uh, new costumes and events as you make your way through the song list and have like a mini story mode and like somehow the dancing is helping out the uh, uh, Squid Sisters and off the hook. <laughs> mm, it could work. I, I think we can all agree though Splatoon is, or Splatoon 2 
it's coming to an end. Like it feels like they've been, they've been, they've had a good ride. There's still a great a player base. Like you can go online, you'll always find someone to play against. But I think it's time to move on for something new. Whether it's a spin-off, whether it's a full-fledged sequel, uh, I, I think it's just this is the time to really just do a different Splatoon. Makes sense to me. It's, yeah, Splatoon Two. Was, I mean, right? They basically said it's done with them no longer providing major content updates, right? And this Splatfest coming to an end. Um, but is it? Do you think they would? Re- do you think it, they could do with Splatoon Three at this point? I guess Splatoon Two was revealed not too long after they stopped supporting Splatoon One, if I remember correctly, mm. right? I guess yeah, that's not, true. not too long after. Uh, I guess the difference there was they're moving to a different console, and uh, it feels like one of those evergreen franchises like Mario Kart that doesn't really get right. one, more than one installment per console. But I can see an exception. I mean, we see so many shooters on other systems get multiple iterations. Call of Duty. Yeah. And that Call of Duty, <laughs> Halo, they, it happens. So I don't, I don't really see a reason why Splatoon couldn't pull it off. Is it weird that I'm a little bit more excited for Splatoon spinoffs than the, the Splatoon 3? <laughs> How about you, Derek? What's your next prediction? Uh... You know, I, I Halloween is coming up, uh, you know, just a few months. So let's go third party on this. Konami did say that they were going to, they had ideas, for, you know, go beyond just that first anniversary collection. I'd say it's time finally to get a reveal of a second anniversary collection for Castlevania where we have all the Game Boy Advance games and all the DS games as part of a collection. Uh, The Zero ZX collection showed how you do uh, DS games onto the Switch and other consoles, of course, uh, and, you know, still make that work. Uh, I'm not sure who developed that one, um, but, you know, they got M2 to do it like they did for the first anniversary collection. They could uh, have one of the absolute best game collections out there because those six games are freaking amazing some of the best games across the entire series and god i want it (laughs) just to have it to free some of these games from the ds from the game boy advance have a better chance for more people to experience them because it is getting harder at this point there there's so much value in there derek but i do have to ask one question do we ignore Symphony of the Night? Because it's part of that lineage of those Castlevania games. Uh, and it'd be a bit weird to have all these anniversary collections and just not have Symphony. That's true, but I, I think Sony messed with things because of their whole... Um, what is it? The uh, the collection they had with Symphony and, and uh, Rondo. Right. Uh, and they made it exclusive. So I think Sony wanted to associate Symphony only with PlayStation and paid that a little extra money for it so I think I think that's why it's easy to get around the Symphony it'd be great to have Symphony on other consoles and I, man if they could pull that off and put Symphony and Rondo on there as well pff, aces but my guess is that in Game Boy Advance and DS games and it's hard to complain with that like that there's mm-hmm. so much value in that collection there and I think there's a lot of games people generally haven't played I've not played all of those so I, I would love that so much Trust me, there's uh, some of those games are some of my favorite in the franchise, mm-hmm. uh, and that's that. So, yeah, please, <laughs> Konami, at least show that you can still do re-releases and make them worthwhile. <laughs> How about you, John? What's another prediction? All right, so I think that we might get... Like, last year, I was very disappointed with one game. That game was Banana Blitz HD. They remastered the worst Monkey Ball game <laughs> And they somehow took away a lot of what made it kind of gave it an identity in the first place. So what I'm predicting is they are finally going to right this wrong and give us a remaster of the first two Monkey Ball games with online play. We can finally play Monkey Target online and all in the world will be good. (laughs) That'd be incredible. (laughs) I hope that happens. (laughs) That'd be really nice. I think they probably sold the demand after what happened with Banana Blitz. And I don't even know how well Banana Blitz sold. I certainly didn't pick it up. (laughs) Either they saw that there's demand for one and two, or they looked at the sales and said no one likes Monkey Ball anymore. And they just <laughs> didn't. <laughs> that al- that is always the fear. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else? We, what else could we see from Sega potentially? Were, uh, are we talking new games, ports, re- uh, re-releases? Well, I actually do have another uh, Sega uh, prediction. So mm-hmm. they've been talking about a 3D Sonic game for. Well, they've been talking about a new Sonic game for a while, and I don't think this is the time to announce it. They seem to be announcing that on their own terms. But what I do think we might get is a tease alongside a Sonic remaster. And that remaster is a game that's never left the Wii being Sonic Colors. I think Sonic Ooh. Colors could finally get a HD treatment for Switch. And after announcing that, they'll do something they did similar to Forces. So in a previous Direct, they, they showed off Sonic Mania. 
and then tease the Avatar character in Forces after that. I think we might get something similar to that where they announce Colors HD and then slightly tease the next big game. Hey, I'd be down for that. I mean, Colors is a great game. Uh, it is weird it's never been ported to any other console uh, because it's there's nothing about it being on the Wii that would prevent that. No, you can play uh, entirely with a GameCube or Classic controller. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, I mean, I know a lot of people are hoping for it to be on PC because that would help the mod community. And, you know, people have done amazing things with uh, Unleashed and, uh, you know, Sonic, uh, is Sonic 06 on PC? I'm not sure. But it's a lot of those known. games. Okay. But a lot of those games that have been ported to the PC have been really done up. And the, the Sonic mod community is one of the more, more active out there and supported by Sega. So amazing things could happen if they decided to port colors to modern consoles. I want that so much. <laughs> Colors was a really fun game, and it's it surprises me that Sega doesn't do more with their back, with their 3D Sonic catalog at least. They love revisiting the uh, 2D ones, but the 3D ones, not so much. Um, yeah, and Colors. <laughs> like the great. adventure games have a huge fan base, but they have not ported that since the 360. And they've been talking about Sega Rage's Dreamcast for ages now. They've just been they've been teasing it. They've been talking about the possibilities, but it's never showing up. Oh man, if we could get a Sega Ages and them do Skies of Arcadia, wouldn't that be amazing? That'd be so good. <laughs> I would buy almost every single Dreamcast release they put out. I ignore the majority of the Mega Drive ones just because I, I've bought them over and over. Mm. I have no need for them. I think the Sonic games and Fantasy Star are the only ones I really went for. But Sega Rage's Sonic Adventure, Sega Rage's Crazy Taxi, Sega Rage's uh, Shenmue, I'll, I'll get all of these games. Mm -hmm. Choo Choo Rocket, oh man, yes. get Capcom in there, do pow Power Stone. Sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, speaking of returning classic games, I predict that Nintendo fi will finally add Nintendo 64 games to Nintendo Switch Online service. I mentioned they, they need mm. value added content to it, that's how you do it. You finally give us access to a catalog of 64 games. Is that how we're going to get Mario 64? <laughs> on the Switch? <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> I mean, that would be the big thing to add for a Switch Online to have Mario 64 on there. It would be a little odd. But, you know, it, it's, I think that's the one kind of hold up to it <laughs> if they are doing this collection. That would hopefully mean that the... Uh, I mean, assuming that happens at all. <laughs> would be that the mm. 64 remake is a pro or the 64 version in the collection is a proper remake rather than just a port with widescreen and HD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That would be and nice. Like, like right now, the only games worth playing on the Super Nintendo Online are Super Mario Kart and Pound Upon. <laughs> Whereas mm -hmm. with N64, you can have Mario Party, Mario Kart 64, Smash. Yes, it would be a literal yeah. game changer. It's the fun machine. You could play four players of people. I mean, especially in these quarantine times, like, this would be huge. If I could play Mario Party 2 with you guys, well, that would be such a oh, fun man. experience online. And, yeah, that that would that alone adds so much to the value of the service. Get get at those uh, third-party companies in there with some great multiplayer, like, let's get Snowboard Kids. I want Snowboard Kids. Bomberman 64. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> Other predictions. Uh, okay, so, uh, we know that Metroid Prime 4 is just kind of happening at some point. <laughs> Prime Trilogy's been a tease, well not tease, Prime Trilogy's been a rumoured for such a long time. I'm not predicting that now. I think that's going to come some point, but probably closer to when Prime 4 releases to carry that momentum. But Samus Returns did end on a cliffhanger. It, it teased, basically, the next game, Metroid 5. And I think that there is a very real possibility that Mercury Steam is on that right now. Uh, but I'm actually predicting two things. I think not only is Metroid 5 going to be announced, but I think they're going to end the trailer with a shadow drop of Samus Returns HD releasing right now on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and uh, Mercury Steam have precedent for this. They, uh, they yeah. brought over their 3DS Castlevania from 3DS to 360. And this presumably runs on the same engine. So doing something of that caliber, I think, is, is in the realm of poss possibility. Hey, I'd be totally down for that because I, I really enjoyed Samus Returns. I think Mercury Steam is a pretty dang good development studio. Uh, they've done some really good work, and people are kind of down on them for their Castlevania games, but I think they're flawed but good. And, um, man, a Metroid 5. Honestly, a Metroid 5 is more hype to me than friggin' Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been on a cliffhanger since Fusion. It's been so mm -hmm. long. 
And I, I feel like Metroid Momentum would be very healthy right now, because Prime 4 has the potential to be big. It's it's one of the, like, it's, it's basically Nintendo's AAA game right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's so far off. They started development last year. So to be able to have Samus Returns come to Switch, have Metroid 5 come along, have the Prime Trilogy, and then end off with Prime 4, I think there, there's, a possible, there's a possibility Metroid could finally succeed if they just give it the momentum and give people a chance to buy them. Yeah, I think that's enough to get people interested, invested, maybe check it out. Uh, you know, it's, it's been talked about so much, but and it's always Super Metroid that gets re-released. -re so if they found a way to, like, uh, put in... Like you know the original, you know uh, Zero Mission, um, uh, Fusion, all that as well. Some way to get people caught up for a Metroid Five, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, so. I remember also at the end of Sounds Returns there was a little Fusion tease. It's more of just continuity than a tease. But imagine if they did remake Fusion. Hey, I I'd be there. I I love <laughs> Fusion. Finally, do justice to Adam again. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I predict. We will see a proper trailer for Breath of the Wild 2. I think we need Ooh. to. We need to hmm. soon. If not, this one will be the next one. But I think we're overdue. <laughs> so how that... much do you think they're going to show? Do you think they're just going to show like another cinematic trailer? No. Or just a full gameplay blowout? I think it has to be a gameplay blowout at this point. That's the biggest mystery about this game. Is what exactly is happening here. We saw it earlier. They touched on that. We saw elements of the same world before. The question is, like, how much is actually new here? So I think that's what they need to address now, is... It, I really think it's less what's happening and more, where are we? <laughs> how does this <laughs> world work? And that's what I really want to know. Um, and, and I think, too, like, I'm sure they will have shown something off during E3, and with the fact that E3 was cancelled, I think they've been sitting on this next trailer for, or preparing one at least, for Showcase soon. So I think there's a very good chance of that, or I predict that we will be seeing it here. What if instead of because I'm not sure sure we'll see Breath of the Wild two uh, in this in this one. It's just I feel like they want they want to have a something bigger. You know, it wouldn't be something they just like here you go. <laughs> you know, pop out and there it is. Uh, they'd probably have a bit of build up to it. They build up to a treehouse for Paper Mario the Origami King. So yeah, I feel like <laughs> Nintendo would advertise it a bit more. Well, we don't know. It's true, but we don't know if they're. We still don't know for sure they're not going to announce this direct ahead of time, assuming it happens. True, true. Um, either way, I'm. I'm not so sure we'll see Breath of the Wild two, but I do wonder, Zelda related, if we might finally get a Hyrule, a Hyrule Warriors two. I'll be okay be, with that. Yeah, I'd be down. I think that'd be a really interesting interpretation, and they could. You know, I, I've seen different games in the, the Musou series uh, really take on the qualities and to see them take on maybe more qualities from Breath of the Wild this time around could be a much different, more interesting game than Hyrule Warriors. And Hyrule Warriors is just fan service the game as far as Zelda's concerned. But, uh, you know, they could have that and maybe expand upon it too with a, se a sequel to Hyrule Warriors. I kid you not, I started yawning as soon as you suggested this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hyrule Warriors is my favorite Musou game. That, that's not saying much. Mm. I'm not a big Musou fan, but it was much better than Fire Emblem Warriors. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and I'd rather them... I mean, honestly, I'd rather them explore another IP than another Zelda Musou. Um, mm. Sure. You know, do... I don't know. Do a Mario Musou where you're taking on a horde of Goombas or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just something. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the next natural Musou might even be Xenoblade. You know, that would... Uh, combining those characters, they have enough of a lineup now... Uh, easily, easily be able to get a lineup of like 12 to 15 characters. Uh, and then even go crazy with, you know, some stuff from X to be in the mech, be in the scales. <laughs> yeah, and like they, they've crossed over dimensions a few times already, like Xenoblade 1 and 2. They had those challenge rooms where like Shulk could meet Rex. Uh, they could just do something like that, like that again, just bring them all together, get X, get, get 1, get 2, just have this big story. Maybe even get weird with the law. Like, just have something that's just bringing all these continuums together. Somehow get Square in with, Z uh, with Zeno Gears or, or Zeno Saga. Just <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be this. wild? You have all the Zeno stuff in there. Mm hmm. Secret unlockable Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine if every character was just behind the Blade system again. So, just more of that horrible gacha. Oh, God. <laughs> Except it's actually have to pay for it this time. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> It'd be awful. Uh, Still, I like the idea of a Xenoblade Musou. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Don't know if it'll actually happen. Uh, of course, I'm still sitting here hoping for Kirby RPG. Like, I do wonder yes. if it's time to finally get something related to Kirby again. Because it has been a while. 
Well, was Star it... Allies two years ago? Something like uh, that, yeah. Are you guys already forgetting about that eShop exclusive Kirby game? That's basically just a slightly expanded version of something that was already on the 3DS. Yes, I have forgotten about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> about it immediately. <laughs> uh-huh. Wasn't it all that long ago, though, so... <laughs> no. I, 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 if Kirby has another game, I really hope it's not just another safe 2D platformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, Robobot was a great example of what you can do with the franchise while sticking to its roots. Mm-hmm. But then Star Allies for me was just too vanilla. So either do something crazy like Robobot again, or go out there and do a full 3D game, right. or an RPG. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, Ro- Robobot did feel like the pinnacle, and Star Allies has its mo- moments, especially after all the free updates. Having all that... Mm. Uh, those cameos and having all these characters from the across the entire series is fantastic and I think gives uh, Star Allies a lot more value but on its own it is just more of the same and a little too easy and not especially interesting but I still want to see what they do next with Kirby because Kirby is so freaking experimental. There's so much they could do with him. Even if it's just a, a 3D remake or an upscaled remake of one of his old games uh, like spinoff games like let, let's you know, Kirby Pinball or uh, Dream Kirby, Course. Let's Kirby have Dream Course back. Yeah, Air Ride. Uh, there's there's a lot of potential there in the modern era. Yeah, Kirby Air Ride could be a ton of fun. I mean, you you probably wouldn't have to do much to it. I would maybe tweak the actual racing mechanics, but honestly, if you just put City Trial online, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> City Trial 99, once again. Yeah, mm-hmm. just put just put that on Switch online. There you go. There's yeah, your value. That'd be, that'd be so good. <laughs> So one thing I think uh, they'll do that I've already touched on a little bit is, uh, especially in these COVID times, is uh, augment existing experiences they've already had. So I already, get, I already suggested they will see uh, Ring Fit Adventure DLC. Uh, my next prediction is Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. Because there is a major issue in that game. And that is, you cannot play bowling with four players. So I predict oh. that they will patch this game. They will announce an update for the game that adds uh, that, that adds some minor quality of life enhancements, including you know additional games that can now be played with more players, such as uh, golf, uh, bowling, and things of that nature. I don't think they'll add any new games, if only because they've already locked themselves into 51. <laughs> but I think yeah. we'll see uh, some small enhancements. Yeah, I mean, it's weird when you go online and you can only choose, like, uh, seven four-player games out of the 51. It it feels very limited, especially when some games have no real reason. Like, golf. Why can't you play four-player golf? Right. It makes no sense. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit unfortunate. I've not picked up Clubhouse. I'm not even sure how well it did. I don't think they said yet. I guess we'll find out in the financials. Um, I feel like there's a lot more you can do with some of the existing games, though. Like, in golf, all the existing courses are based on some from uh, both NES Golf and also Wii Sports. Mm -hmm. They could do some entirely new holes, or they could bring back a few uh, more of the ones that weren't remade. Um, There's ways you can expand the existing games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They could add alternate modes to some of them. I think there was... I I think I saw some people requesting, like, a mode for um, Texas Hold'em, perhaps, or some one of the card games so yeah i mean there's really a lot they can do with the existing infrastructure uh that probably wouldn't cost them all that much honestly and if the game is selling well uh that'd be just a kind of a good way of maintaining momentum and again maintaining interest in the current game so uh i guess as, and just to build off of that real quick i predict that there won't be any animal crossing coverage here i think they're sticking to the <laughs> seasonal trailers and we just got july not that long ago and we're only what a third of the way through um its season so or the summer update i should say i think it makes yeah. sense uh, i just want to call off some very quick and very safe predictions um doom eternal it's been delayed for a long time for <laughs> switch it's been out since march and other platforms and I think they've just said summer, so that's probably going to be shown here. Uh, also, Persona 5 Scramble, I think, has a good chance of a localization Ooh, a being point. announced. I hope so. It's due. It needs yeah. it. Do you think it's the only Persona game that will be announced here, though? Because 4 <sighs> Golden isn't old on PC, so I don't know if now's the time. But I do think it's going to happen eventually. Yeah, it, it still just makes so much freaking sense to get Persona 3 and 4, at the very least, onto the Switch. Yeah, I mean, it's sold, I think it was 500,000 copies on Steam, so yeah. it, it's just free money. Why would you not, why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, they could do straight ports of the the classic Persona games that were on PSP onto the Switch. I mean, on, mm-hmm. maybe a, a slight up and you're good if you want to really complete the Persona uh, series on there. I mean... 
uh, freaking Shantae has its entire series on there. Why not do that for Persona? Like, really dive in for those fans that, like, you want to try out the entire series? Here it is. <laughs> and Atlas is slowly getting there. Like, Catherine Full Body just released on Steam. Oh, uh, sorry, Catherine Full Body just released on Switch. So mm-hmm. it seems it seems like they're building up to this. They're, they're finally getting their Switch support in there. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other predictions you guys have? Um, no big ones, I wouldn't Not say. Really. I think Mario Party 2 is a no-brainer for being in development. I don't know mm. if it's a no-brainer to release, though. At least not yet. Uh, Super Mario Party 2. Yeah. Yeah, Super right. Mario Party 2. Uh, the first game, it sold really well. It's one of the best-selling Switch games, and it, it wasn't even like a crazy reimagining of the franchise. It, ju- it just made little baby steps to being back to its <laughs> former glory. Mm. Uh, so I think that you can definitely expand upon that. And it had no DLC, so clearly they're building a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> that would yeah. be a great <laughs> holiday title. Mm. I'm having a hard time because I'm hoping to see something new, but I'm not sure from which franchises. Uh, I mean, I, I guess actually the big question is, will we get a tease for the next Smash character? Like, are we going to get a t- well, what you you know, time frame? I mean, uh, I'm going to say probably not yet, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so as indecisive as possible. Um, but no, I-, I think there is a possibility of uh, maybe not the franchise. Uh, maybe the franchise if it's Nintendo related. Um, Can you but- imagine if it was in like, the next character is from Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> um but yeah, I think at least we'll get the time frame. Uh huh. I think um, that sort of arm style tease might be uh, like future rollout. I think it worked pretty well. Like it kept speculation in check, uh, but also made it a bit more exciting. At the same time, though, spirits are also on the table now, so maybe it doesn't need that. But I, I do feel like they could say like, oh, uh, it could be like a pound upon character, or it could be <laughs> I don't know, any any Nintendo franchise. I don't know if they can. I mean, I'm sure there's some other IP they could with, but I feel like. Arms is a very special case. How many other games have a cast, uh, a truly eclectic cast of that nature, where um, there wouldn't either be a clear victor or that people just wouldn't automatically gravitate toward one very specific character? Um, I mean, I guess besides, like, I, I can only think of other fighting games. I don't know what other series you could do that with. I think there's already mm. represented series you could do that with. Like DK, you can have like Funky or Dixie or, um, or like Zelda. There's a bunch of picks. But yeah, I, I, it is quite specific to ARMS where there isn't really a main character to choose from. I mean, even in saying Xenoblade, there's a lot of characters to choose from. And I know a lot of people would like like uh, Laura and Jin. Um, for, you know, but they're from DLC. I still think it would be probably be Rex and Pyra if we're going to get Xenoblade re- uh, representation. Yeah, I, yeah, that's why I think it's going to be more of a time frame than a, like, hey, this game is is getting the next, uh, it's a character from this game is our next DLC. I think that's possible. Yeah, I don't think we'll get the next Smash character here, but I think it's possible that we'll have a small update on when do, actually, I don't know, it feels it feels weird just to get a timing and nothing else, though, to me. I guess that essentially is what ARMS was, but we had, we did have the IP, which is a pretty big deal, so, I don't yeah. know, I, I guess if I had to commit, I will say there will be no Smash news in this direct. I think I agree. It feels yeah. too early. Uh, Min Min just came out, and they they spent a long time with the release, like the announcement to release with Min Min. So I think we'll probably hear about the next character maybe at the end of the year. I'm not expecting more than one releasing this year, though. After Min Min, at least. All right. Anything else, everyone? Yeah, nothing big. I think we'll probably see Pokemon Crown Tundra, but that's not exciting. <laughs> that's just a given. <laughs> I don't even think that's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't I think, think so either. They'll wait a it's little a longer until we get a release date or anything like that. I don't even think we're going to see anything from, like, Pokemon Snap. I wish. I mean, that's too early, yeah. Yeah. My final question, then, is we didn't really talk about the branding for the 35th anniversary. What do you think they'll do with this? Are they just going to brand it as, like, do you think it'll be a 3D collection or Mario's 35th anniversary collection? Or do you think it could be in Mario Super Mario All-Stars 2 or Super Mario 3D All-Stars? Like, what do you think? How are they going to present this to the world? All-Stars would be cool. I think All-Stars 2 is maybe a bit too... like that's, That branding might be a bit too old to use, because there's a bunch of people have no idea there's, a, there's an All-Stars 1 out there. But 3D All-Stars might work, though. I was, I'm trying to remember what they did for the uh, Kirby... The Kirby Anniversary Collection they did on the Wii. Maybe to label it the same way as that. Um, 
was it is the 25th anniversary collection or something like that? I can't something exactly like remember, but that'd be my guess. Is it would just be the Super Mario 35th anniversary collection, and you know have the three different Mario's on there, and boom, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that probably will be the case. Although I feel like 35th is such a weird year to celebrate an anniversary. <laughs> yeah. It's such an arbitrary number. I, mean, I guess all numbers are ultimately arbitrary, but this one seems to have particularly no significance. <laughs> so, yeah. Or actually, you know what? I take that back. I think they actually will just go with like a a, a more general a collection type thing. So it won't be all stars. I don't think it'll be 35th. It might have like a little 35th badge on it, but that won't be what it'll be titled. It'll be like Super Mario 3D Collection or something. Something like that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Super Mario 3D All Stars. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Hey, I'm I'm down with bringing back the All Stars branding. I thought that was cool. Um, so that would be that. The only thing is for me that would suggest a broader remake than what we proposed in this discussion because the original All Stars redid the visuals for all of those games. Um, so if they're in in my case, I only predicted it for 64. So I would hope. I mean, my dream is still that they're, they're doing even more than that for all of them. Um, and that if that were the case, and All Stars. 3D All-Stars is how you present that to the world. That'd be amazing. I'm just not fully expecting it. That'd be ambitious. That yeah. sure would be. Mm -hmm. All right. Where's your guys' hype at for this? <laughs> for this dude, for this rumor direct that isn't official yet. <laughs> what are you, are you, where are you on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> like I, a, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to say like three or four. Cause I'm not, yeah. I don't want to like raise my expectations. Like, Oh, it's gonna be a full 10. They're going to blow out. No, uh, it's good. I'm going in here extremely modest. I, you know, I could, Monday could come around and nothing could happen and be like, okay, <laughs> that's yeah, sure. I, I mean, we've thrown out a lot of um, predictions in this video, but honestly, I don't think this year is going to be a huge one. No. Hopefully they'll show some 2021 stuff, like just showing what their future pipeline is like. But uh, yeah, honestly, I, I'm not expecting the world with this, if it even exists. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what number are you putting at, at John? Derek's three um, or four. I'll go, I'll go a bit, I'll, I'll say five, but it's still not very high. I'll, I'll keep your mind at a four. All right, I'll go six. <laughs> I'll be slightly more optimistic. I will say that no matter what form that 3D collection takes, I'm going to be excited for it. Regardless, like, it'll be fun to revisit, um, to some degree, all of those games. <laughs> um, no matter <laughs> how upgraded they are, although I really do hope that they lean in on improving them to some degree, uh, especially the visuals for 64 and some of the gameplay issues for Sunshine. Uh, Mario Galaxy is basically perfect, so they, <laughs> they don't need to touch it too much. Um, but yeah, just having those three collection, those three games back, because they haven't been, uh, Mario 64 aside, they haven't been released in any form uh, since their release, out, uh, besides China, in Mario Galaxy's case. So it would be really great to just have those available on the popular system that people can easily revisit once again. And even Mario 64, its, re it's re releases have been kind of haphazard. Uh, like, we had the DS port that some people prefer, I didn't. <laughs> I thought it had some major issues, especially control-wise. And then even Mario 64 on the emulators, where I believe both Wii and Wii U, I could be wrong, I think it was both, had like major input lag. So uh, it didn't even play as well on the, on those as it did on the original hardware. So having a version of that that plays well in HD and widescreen would be pretty great. And we caught a small taste of that in Mario Odyssey, where you could wear the Mario 64 costume in a Mario 64 looking area behind the castle. Um, and that looked pretty great for as, you know, archaic looking as it intentionally was. I could still have fun with that, obviously. So, yeah, on that alone, I'll give this a 6, and anything else, you know, like Pikmin 3, um, Breath of the Wild 2, possible teats, Ring Fit Adventure DLC in my case, hopefully, uh, is just gravy on top, so, yeah. It's weird to think that Mario Galaxy came out 13 years ago, oh, so if oh you were God. 5 when it came out, you'll oh, be wow. 18 now. Jesus. Ugh. <laughs> That's how, yeah, that, that game is the year I started my official gaming career, really, uh, in a professional sense at IGN, and yeah, that's forever ago, so... Jeez, thanks, John. We're ending this on a complete <laughs> downer. <laughs> All right, everyone. So that's our predictions. But let us know what you're expecting in the comments below. Whether, A, you think this direct's happening at all, and B, if slash when it does, what you're hoping for from it. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And with that, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click that subscribe button and ring that bell for tons more on uh, whatever may be happening in this direct if it happens. And everything else, Nintendo Switch as well. We'll catch you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>